So at this point, we've got our pop-up working, we've got an image in the pop-up, but it's not styled very well. Again, this is the user experience. From a programming aspect, it works. There's the picture. But from a user experience, it doesn't. Why is it leaning on the left? So that's going to be a little bit of CSS to get this to work. Um, we're going to use some CSS that we've used a little bit already before, but we're going to repurpose it for this picture. So we need to set up a little bit here. We need to set up a class so that we can reuse this code. Now we do have some similar code, uh, some CSS code that already centers things, and so we can either reuse existing code or create code for specific purposes. So let's think about both ways. Let's go to your folder where you've got your project and let's open the CSS file. We're, we're, working, with, we're working with the HTML file, the presentation layer. Let's open uh, the, uh, not the presentation, the, the structure, structure layer. And then let's open the CSS, the presentation layer. So let's open the CSS file in Notepad. Remember we wrote a little CSS here before we've got a CSS rule. Yes? Mine is empty. Your CSS file? Okay, I need to move on, but um, let's... what we write next will just be added to it. We've got a CSS uh, rule that is supposed to make images wide. We've got a rule that will crop images. We've got one here for the button to be on the right side to close. And we've got one called grid align center. So these are things we wrote before, but we're going to write a brand new one in order to center graphics. So we're going to switch back and forth between the CSS file and the index file. Let's go back to the index file first line 240, where we've added our picture. And what I want is to, to center the picture, yes, but I'm going to add text and other things. So I'm going to want a way to center that picture and the other things I'm going to put on the screen. So I'm going to add a div here, a generic div container, where I will then be able to center things. So let's back up and give yourself a new line 240, push, push the image tag down to 241. We'll start the div tag, and then after the image tag, add a new line, and close the div tag. So you see this? We're opening and closing the div tags, and you and you want your image tag inside of the divs. So the div is a generic container that will allow us to do a variety of things through CSS or JavaScript. And in order for us to reference it, it needs some identifier. So we'll go back to the div, and we will add either an ID or a class but we're going to use a class so that we can reuse this. We can redo our styling more than once. If we use an ID, we can only use it once. So we'll add a class attribute to that div. Let's call it div center. That's just simply to tell me this is a div that will center content. And it's a class, so I can reuse it many times as I, as many times as I want throughout my project. So that's all we need here in the HTML. The structure layer. That's all we need here. Uh, then we define well. What does div center do in the CSS file? in the presentation layer. What's that? This is going to center the picture, but we're going to have text and other things, and I want that centered also. I'm going to save the HTML file, jump over to your CSS file, 
And at the end of the document, well, we need to define what does dot what does dot div center do? What does it mean? Yes, actually we could do that exact thing already. We can reuse that one which it already exists. But I'm going to reserve this one to work with grids. When I create UI-grid, it might need centering and such. So that's what that rule is for. Um, this one is for generic divs. So I could already use that existing <coughs> rule, but I'm use I created it for grids. But I mean, like we we just add the grid. We do what we need to do here in the div center, and then we add it to the class with align center. Yes. So yeah. If we did class equals div. If we did class grid align center, it would it would also work. So you're gonna see actually that this looks the same. And yes, we could reuse that. Um, but what if I also wanted to add a yellow color behind all my grids, but not behind the div? So then definitely I would need two separate CSS rules for that. So right now that they both do the same thing, it's kind of redundant. But later on, if I wanted to say make my divs with a background color of pink, but not the grids, then I'd have that leeway. So that's it. Go ahead and save both of your files. We added a text align center. And even though it's a picture, it still works. It still aligns the content, this picture, inside the div. Or it should. Go ahead and um, check it on your browser. There it is, centered. Okay, so back on the HTML file, I then want to also add some text here, a picture and a little text. So let's create a new line, 242. After the image, we'll, we'll add a paragraph. We'll add a little text after the image. And notice my paragraph is in my div, so that will also get centered, not just the picture. We'll just say something brief here. San Diego continuing education is committed to blah, blah, blah. Just write something in that paragraph. So a little text. Eventually I want to use this about screen 
to do a little bit more. I wanted to show, uh, I want, this is the screen where I want people to be able to access a map to get to the college and then also the customization which is it will ask you for a username or your name and then your name will be put into the app. It'll customize the app based on your name. So that'll work well as what we've done over here where well we've got waiting here a left column and a right column and we've also got one here left column right column. I want to do the same thing on the on this pop-up box. So let's let's write one from scratch instead of copying and pasting but we'll write it together. We'll write that grid to make two columns. We'll write it inside of this about screen. So still within the div because I want that centered. Next line here, we're going to start a div and close a div. This is what's going to start my container to give me two columns or four columns. This container can give me two columns or and three rows, two rows, one row, whatever. My grid is going to exist in this div. <clears throat> and furthermore, so that it acts like a grid, we need to add here a class. We need to add this class attribute that's built into jQuery Mobile that will then upgrade this basic div container into a grid. And so that is UI-grid-A. that gives me two columns. If I wanted one column, I don't use a, I don't use this at all. This assumes you want at least two columns, grid A. If you want three columns, grid B. Uh, four columns, grid C, and so forth. Maybe that's not as intuitive as it could be. Maybe in future versions of jQuery Mobile, they rewrite it to say UI-columns one UI dash columns two. Who knows? They might do that at some point, but right now it's A, B, C, D, etc. And your quote, don't forget that. That would have been a big problem. Don't forget to end the quotes there, but I do didn't. So there's uh, there's two columns. Well we need to define what's in the first column, what's in the second column. So inside of that div, we will put in another div pair. This will define the first column, and it needs a class. This is a class that's built in, again, to jQuery Mobile, and it's called Block A. Again, not the most intuitive names here, but this is defining now everything that could exist on my left column. So after this div, I need another one, UI Block B. The right column. <clears throat> By themselves, divs are pretty boring, but once we we're at we add classes and IDs and such, they 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 get enhanced, and they're getting enhanced via jQuery Mobile. And I'm just going to put a little something here so that I can see it obviously and just to see if it works. But here's what I have so far that all of this, make sure you've got all of those lines, save it and run it. And right here they should then give us column one, column two next to each other. Make sure everything's spelled correctly and then we'll actually put something into them in just a moment. column one, column two. 
jQuery mobile automatically spaces them out. So there's an equal amount to the left and to the right, and the text is centered in each column. Well, that's because it's inheriting the div center from up here. Everything inside of this div is being centered, and that's why column 1 and column 2 are centered. If I didn't have that, the text is to the left, and that text is to the left, to the left of the column. The column goes from here to here, and from here to there. So what I actually want in those columns are a couple of buttons. One button which will open my map, and one button which will ask the user to add their name for customization. So we'll say um, that will actually be a button called map, and we'll have one called customize. That's just plain text, of course, so we need to turn them into links and then into buttons and, and all of the usual. So A tags, hrefs, So we're turning each of those each of those plain text, those plain words, we're turning them into links with the A tags. I'm adding href pound with nothing yet. That's just a, a dummy link. It doesn't go anywhere, but it but it behaves like a link. It looks like a link, it gets the drop shadows and so forth. It doesn't go anywhere yet. But we've seen this before, of course. Then I'm gonna add data roll button to both of them. Or copy and paste if you don't want to waste time. So now they're both buttons. I want icons, data-icon, and for the map, I have an icon that will be pretty appropriate. It's the navigation icon. It's like a little compass, compass arrow. And for, for the user to customize, there's an icon for that also. That one is user. You'll get like a little anonymous person. I'm not going to add data transitions to these, and I'll explain why in a moment. But if you don't add a transition, if you don't add an animation, you automatically get the default fade animation anyway. We could add one, but we'll see why we don't want it in a moment. So let's just make sure this works. Save it and run it. You should get a couple of buttons that look like buttons, icons too, and then we'll actually make them do something in just a moment. Question? To the left? To the left? Nope, they just send right there on the A tags. Let's see how that looks. That shouldn't be anything new. Map and customize. Actually, what I want to do is they're taking up too much space, aren't they? They're stretching out to fill as much as space as they want. We had a data attribute that would allow us to shrink them only to the size of their content. Anyone remember that one?
let's say we need to add data dash inset equals true, right? Confirm that I'm blanking. No, what's it called again? Uh, we did it elsewhere. We did it on the art screen. Let me confirm here. Inline, not inset, inline. Data inline true. You see, I don't always have them memorized, even looks like even though it looks like I do. You just have to know where to look it up. And we'll add data dash inline true. So now the buttons shouldn't expand to fill as much space as they can anymore. They'll, they should only now be as big as the content of the button. Question? What if you want them the same size, though? Like, you don't want them... We'd have to write some CSS and attach that CSS to both of them so that they both have the same size. Is there a way to make them the same size but also expand a certain amount? Or yeah. have to be fixed? No, they, that would also require more CSS. We can write some CSS so that it's always going to be a minimum width and a maximum height. I mean, a minimum width and a maximum width. Did you just add some padding to that? Just a moment. Did that answer your question? Yeah, because I don't like some different shapes. Yeah. Shape. We'd have to write some more CSS. So good, you're thinking like the designer. Well, and what was your... I was saying, could you add some padding or margin to the back to the button? You could. You know, if we add more spaces, if you're thinking about adding more space that way, we could. But the problem with that is we haven't defined a font. So technically, it's going to be based on the font of the device. So on some devices, the font is going to be wider than others. So if we added five spaces and it looks good on our font here, if someone has a different font, suddenly that five spaces is too much or too little. So adding artificial spaces like this wouldn't be the best. We would want to use some CSS, a little more complex CSS, to make them to force them to be certain sizes. Let's see here, map and customize. So now they're not taking as much space. Maybe if we had map as wide as customize, that would look a little more aesthetically pleasing, but we'd have to kind of delve into a little bit more complex CSS than, than I'd like to at the moment. And they don't do anything yet, because they just say href equals pound. So did that work for everyone? All right, so the way that the, the map will work is that we... Raise your hand if you want to do it the hard way. Raise your hand if you want to do it the less hard way. Okay. Those are the only two options, hard way and less hard way. There's no easy way. Okay, the less hard way. And that's the way I recommend, because the hard way would be for us to go to a map website like Google Maps or Bing Maps or MapQuest or whatever and read, how do you create a map with your service? Because I want a real map that I can zoom in and out and all of that. I just want, I don't want a picture of a map. I want a real map. So we'd have to go to these websites, read their documentation known as their API, read their documentation and, and read how to make a map. That's the hard way. The less hard way is to start with a starting point. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to start with a starting point and then customize it to our needs.